All right. Switch back to this one and switch back to here. Got it. Let's share the screen. All right. We are back. Thank you, everyone. We are live now. If I can get this thing going. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us for another edition of Smart With Your Money Live. My name is Felipe. Uh, the Community Outreach Coordinator here at Debt Wave Credit Counseling, SDFLC. I'm joined today, not by Chase, but by special guest Debt Wave's content writer extraordinaire. We got Katie, because Katie, you know, we're going to talk weddings and, and going to wedding parties. And honestly, um, weddings are a ton of fun, but there's an expense that goes along with it. It's not cheap. Um, and, and let me, while well, I remember, let me remember to hit record here. Um, Chase usually hits the record button, so record to the cloud. All right. Um, but yeah, welcome again, Smart With Your Money Live. Um, today we're talking weddings, saving money on, on wedding tips, going, being part of a wedding. Um, Katie, I know you've been to a wedding or two. Um, I think we've all been to a wedding or two. It's quite the adventure sometimes. It is quite the adventure and there's different experiences if you're, if you identify as a man versus a woman, you know, different expenses go into that. You know what, that's something I definitely wanted to, to highlight. I didn't put it in the slides, but there is a big disparity in, in price. And I don't think as a guy, I don't think we realize that a lot of times us guys, how much cheaper it is um, until you go to a wedding with a significant other and you see all the extra effort that goes along with it. Um, and, and, and I think the first time I went to a wedding with, with Sarah, it was kind of an eye-opening experience. Like, not only does it take longer to get ready, but it costs more. There's a lot more effort to go along with it. Um, and it's because my hair, I cut a, I get a haircut, <laughs> I dry it a little after the shower, and that's it. I'm done. Um, there's, there's, it's just so much easier. You're not um, having to go add a blowout to your wedding expenses. No, no extra <laughs> wedding expenses. Well, these days, I think I would add a haircut as opposed to doing it myself. If I was going to go to a wedding, I'd pay, you know, the money to go get an actual haircut. Uh, but other than that, no, that's $15 expense, um, more of an inconvenience time-wise. But, you know, how much does a wedding cost? There's a lot of other variables that go along with it. It's not just that. It's also where is the wedding located that's a huge one and that one gets all of us um in the average cost to attend a wedding in 2021 um was 460 dollars uh, as according to the knot uh which is a, a a wedding website in town weddings only 270 so the in town weddings are awesome uh mm -hmm. you know you can there's so many different options out of town wedding prices start to go up and then there's out of town where you can drive to it I have a lot of family in Los Angeles. That's out of town technically, but I can drive to LA. Um, and then there's out of town flying. A whole nother ball game. Um, thankfully, most of my friends and family are kind of concentrated in this Southern California area. Um, so I can drive to most of them. But I, I mean, have you ever flown to a wedding? I have. AJ's friend uh, got married in Virginia. So we actually had to fly from San Diego to like the DC area and then drive like oh so you get both and, yeah the best of so both there's ways. a commitment there right <laughs> right yeah when my best friend was uh engaged and they were starting to plan out their wedding for a while there he was like I think it's gonna be in Hawaii man um and I was sitting there like oh man that's that okay I'll, I'll figure it out let me know ASAP um because I <laughs> that's a lot of figuring out to do Thankfully, it was at Balboa Park, and I was able to just take a car. Um, so much easier. But the, the average price increases drastically. If the, and if you have a lot of out-of-town friends and family, you really want to be careful how many you commit to going to, because that adds up real quick. The average gift price uh, was one sixty. So you know, even just that is 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 expensive. Um, and you know, there's a lot that goes with it, but we'll go over some tips to save you some money on all of it. Um, save you 
you know, as much money as possible so that you can make it to as many weddings as you possibly can, because there's a backlog of weddings. The last couple of years, people have been postponing weddings um, and it's time to party it up this year, apparently. So it, it's really, it's a busy wedding season. Um, you know, so you might have two or three weddings this summer to go to. Um, so keep that in mind, that budget. That's the big thing, Katie, set that budget. And I know you've listened to enough of our presentations where you're probably like, I've seen this slide before you have. Uh, <laughs> you saw it last swim live. You'll probably see it at the next one, uh, but set your budget. And, you know, weddings are no different. Um, you know, weddings are, are, are an expense. If you have a lot of them, you know, set a budget, uh, a wedding budget. How much can you spend on weddings this year? And, and, you know, that you might have to prioritize. You might have to, you know, look at it and say, well, that out-of-town wedding, I could skip the out-of-town one and make it to four of them in town. Um, you know, where's the trade-off? Uh, but make a budget. And then more important, perhaps, than making a budget, sticking to the budget. Um, I think, <laughs> especially as you get started with budgeting, I think at least myself, I made a lot of budgets that I just didn't keep. So they did me no good. Um, well, I think too, when it comes to weddings, it's so hard to stay within your budget because it's this person's wedding. Right. And there's that emotional component and you want to celebrate and you want to go all out. Exactly. You want to be, you don't want to be, and you don't want to be like the one person who doesn't go all in. You don't want to be the one person who's like, Hey, we're gonna go do this or that. And you're like, oh, you know, I didn't budget for that one. Um, yeah, to be that person. Excuse me, how much is that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what kind of restaurant are we going to? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know, you you have that budget, and and then it's hard to stick to it. And and also, you get kind of a uh, sucked into the excitement of weddings. Weddings are fun, and it's exciting. Sometimes you're seeing people you don't see all the time. You know, maybe you're meeting up with friends you haven't seen in a while. Uh, and everyone's in that fun, festive, yay attitude type of way, which was what makes it fun. It's also what can make it very easy to say, let's do it. Um, it may make, to me, it makes me want to revert back to my college years of, yes, we'll spend the money. We'll figure it out later. Me too, right? Like they're only getting married once. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe not, but. Hopefully that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. uh, not always, but that's the goal. So stay within within your budget the best you can and, and you know, be good about that. Big component to how well you do at a wedding or how much money you need to budget. Are you part of the wedding party? This is a different budget ball games um if you're if you're a bridesmaid if you're a groomsman if you're the maid of honor if you're the best man new level of budgeting is required if you're in the wedding party um you know there's been weddings where it's like man i really wanted to make your groomsman but the numbers didn't line up you know I, I, she she didn't have enough people i'm good i'm okay as a <laughs> guest um <laughs> don't worry i'll be there um you know, but if you're part of the wedding party, and, and this is important, you know, identify your role in this wedding. Um, and that then that will help dictate your budget. Because if you're going to be a bridesmaid, you're going to be a groomsman, um, you know, it's, it can get, um, it can get expensive. Um, it, it, yeah, it's also not quick. a bad idea to talk to the bride and groom and see what they can do to help you too, if you're struggling. Right. Yeah. And, and they may have built that into their wedding. Um, and, and that's usually when you're part of the wedding party, you do get a heads up. You know, it's not like you find out the month before you find out usually right at the beginning and maybe they do it in a creative way. Um, I don't know if you ever have you ever been invited to be in part of a wedding in a creative way. Um, I was invited to serve cake at a reception. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so that was like you're part of it but you know it's but yay right you're like <laughs> yay i've always wanted to do that right um, <laughs> so but you know it, it's important if you're going to have an, an 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 extra role if you're going to have you know more of a role than most um you kind of ahead of time 
um, get that communicated to you. Um, yeah. You know, it, I, I think with, with my, um, when I invited my, my brother or my uh, cousins, my groomsmen, I created this little, little mini, I don't even know what I was thinking. I think I saw it on Pinterest. Um, and I took some manila folders and I created a logo and I made it like this spy thing. Um, like if you choose to accept the assignment and then like added a redacted paper uh, cool. that was like our story, but most of it was redacted, copy pasted. Um, so <laughs> there was nothing behind the redaction, but, and then I snuck it into their cars or into their house. Um, and they just kind of came home to their room. Like, what is this? How did he get in here? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so it was just a little creative thing but if you're part of the wedding changes your budget around be be good about uh finding that out well and Felipe you yeah. and Sarah are both financial people financial educators yeah. did you have a conversation with your bridal party about what they what their budget looked like or what they could and could not afford we had a pretty good idea of of um we try to keep it also we try to keep it cheap um you know we wanted to keep bridesmaids dresses as least expensive as possible um because at the end of the day no one really you're never going to wear it again um and you know you don't you don't want the, it's not their choice they're not picking it um so we try to find the cheapest um dresses the cheapest uh the the extra outings were very limited it wasn't anything crazy um you know mine was like an extra golf outing something my buddies would have done on any given weekend anyways um so we kept it pretty pretty budget friendly um uh, ahead of the whole thing plus you're planning the wedding you got to be part of it too and you're already trying to be good about money and already like how much am i in already um <laughs> But the end of the, so we did, we did take into account, you know, trying to be friendly with, with budgets. Um, I was going to say, don't rent, uh, maybe I did, don't rent shoes. Everyone has a pair of black shoes. I don't care if your shoes match. Um, <laughs> I don't want to wear the rental shoes. I have comfortable dress shoes that I can wear. Um, so rent the suit and wear whatever shoes you want, uh, which doesn't save you a lot of money. You get to wear your own. They all have black shoes. I know them all. They all have, they all have, if they don't have one, they should own a pair. And that was their chance to go out and pick one that they like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but at the end of the day, it's okay to decline. Um, you know, you can, and, and, and you can elaborate or you can not elaborate depending on your, um, you know, uh, relationship with the couple. Um, Sometimes it might be financial. Sometimes you just have overlapping weddings. Maybe you already have a trip planned that weekend, or you know, maybe you're out of town. Maybe you know, there's a lot of things. Uh, you're at a conference. Doesn't matter, whatever it is. But if you're going to not show up, um, it is a good idea to RSVP and let them know ahead of time. Um, and then if you don't RSVP, don't just show up. Um, you know, that happens too. Uh, you know, but it's okay to say, you know what, I can't, um, I'm sorry. Maybe even you send a gift um, as well. Like you could still send a nice card or send a gift um, if you just can't make it. I don't like declining. I feel weird doing it. Um, and then my, my old yes to everything FOMO self wants to take over. I'm like, I can always check yes. Uh, <laughs> it, it's not college anymore, buddy. You can check now. Um, that's what I have to remind myself. So big expense is potentially is transportation. And we mentioned you got to take a plane. Are you taking a cab? Are you taking a you know ride share? Are you driving there? Um, you know, I, I don't know how many people remember Cash Cab. Maybe I'm too old. Um, and, and not too many people remember. I used to love that show. But that dictates how much you'll need in your budget. As I mentioned, the in-town, the out-of-town is gonna be a huge component. So are you flying? And, and, and I'll go through each little category here, but are, you know, how are you gonna get there? First one is, if you're lucky enough, it's in town. Uh, it's in town, you can drive there. 
If you're going to have a few drinks, which people tend to do at weddings, don't drive there. Take a cab, take a ride share, carpool. Um, and it's pretty cheap compared to the alternatives of being out of town. Um, you know, so you don't have to stay overnight. You can go home at the end of the thing. I kind of like in-town weddings. I don't know about you, Katie, but I like it. Yeah, I like being able to go home. Yeah, do the thing, get ready at home comfortably where you can't forget anything because it's all there at home and then take the Uber, the, the Lyft or whatever, go to the wedding, take it back, stop by at your favorite late night dining place, grab something to eat and then go home. <laughs> that was my beef with the out of town wedding that I went to. We were in the middle of nowhere. So oh, at the see, end of the night, tough. when you're hungry, there was nothing. Nowhere to go. There's no nowhere in and out. There's go. no taco shops 24 hours a day. Yeah. That's and it was I on the East Coast. So it was definitely not a taco not shop. Not looking for taco <laughs> shops anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, it's different, you know, when you're in town, you're, it's, it's, I like it. But that doesn't always happen that way. People like out-of-town weddings. People just live in different parts of the country. Um, so sometimes you just got to go out of town. And, and then it becomes, then it falls into two different categories. Can you road trip it? You know, here in Southern California, I mentioned I've been to tons of weddings in Los Angeles. That's just a short drive up the road. I could choose to stay if it's going to end late. Um, and it's a one night thing. I drive there, I stay. I you know, Uber to the wedding, Uber to the hotel, and then drive home the next morning. You can choose if it's in nearby town, you could choose to go. And if you're not drinking, drive yourself home. Um, you know, if you can, or maybe it's a little further, but you could still drive there. If I was going to a Vegas wedding, for example, here out of San Diego, Vegas is five hours away. I might drive, um, you know, and and, and that could save you some money depending on, you know, other transportation choices that could be cheaper. And you can maybe even carpool. You know, if you're going to another, to an out of town wedding with another couple, uh, with more, with a group of friends, just all jump in the car, maybe even have a fun little road trip out of it on the way there. You ever done a friend's road trip, Katie? I have not. I'm not a great oh, road it, tripper. <laughs> I was going to say, it's fun and miserable at the same time. Uh, <laughs> biggest road trip I've done with my brother and my best friend. And after about a week, I couldn't stand either of them. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they couldn't stand me as well. Um, or is it a plane? This is where it gets expensive. Um, if, if you're going to take a plane, book early. You have the wedding dates ahead of time. Book ASAP. If you've already committed to going, you've made up your mind that you're going, book that plane ticket. They're only going to get more expensive. Um, plus, you might run out of options as you get closer. Busy travel season. It's not just weddings. People are really you know, cranking, cranking up this year. It's those trips. Um, it, it's the airports are going to be crazy. So book ASAP um, and, and get that taken care of. You know, maybe look at nearby airports if you're flying somewhere where there's multiple airports, thinking like Chicago, they got two giant airports sitting right there. New York, you have like four airports that you can fly into. DC, you have a ton of air. We can fly into Baltimore, sometimes it's cheaper. Um, you know, lots of different choices in areas. Sometimes you fly into a place, there's just the one airport. Uh, you know, fly into like Tucson or you fly into you know, Roswell, New Mexico. There's just one little tiny airport. Um, you don't have choices, but if you do have choices, look at different, uh, um, I've flown into both of those, um, <laughs> lodging. You're going out of town. Um, you're going to be there a few days. Where are you staying? Um, you know, are, are you staying at the motel instead of the hotel? Um, you know, does the couple have a room block that, or a group rate? at the venue that, that they may be able to save you some money that way. Um, although that might be cheaper, sometimes it's cheaper to stay across the street, uh, 10 minutes down the road, um, you know, whatever the case may be. So do your research. That is the great thing about the internet. You could very quickly see how far it is from one place to another. You can see what the prices are around all around that area. Um, so do your research and, and find out but you also want to do this ASAP. 
uh, <laughs> because you're going to save the most money. Yeah, and room blocks run out too. They do. That, that can happen. Yeah, they may only have 10 rooms, 15 rooms at whatever the rate is. Um, also consider short-term rentals, um, you know, Airbnbs, let's see, on Verbo. Um, did I say that correctly? Yep. Oh, there you go. I'm working on it. Um, and if you're going to a wedding out of town and you're going to do a short-term rental or something, like that, maybe you link up with another out-of-towner um, and you guys can get the, the short-term rental together if it's a bigger place and split it because um, that can be fun in itself. And if you're going to go to a college friend's party out of town and a whole bunch of you are going, I mean, what better than reunion time um, and being able to split that cost. Uh, so, you know, look to get creative that way. You know, explore the area and see if you have alternatives nearby that might be able to save you some money. And then you have other wedding events. It's not just the wedding all the time. You got after parties, you got, especially if you're part of the wedding, you have rehearsal dinners, you have rehearsals, you have, you know, if you're part of the wedding, you might have to get there a day or two or three early or stay a day after. Um, you know, there, are you part of the group that's going to help set up the venue? Are you part of the group that um, is going to help clean up afterwards? Are you, are there going to be after, after parties? You know, or you even like help? the pre-wedding parties, the bachelor yeah. party, the bachelorette party, exactly. bridal showers. There's a lot of stuff. And all of that costs money. Um, and if you have to get there two or three days early, that's extra lodging, that's extra this, extra that. So, um, you know, definitely keep that in mind. Other wedding events, it's not just the wedding. Um, and this is where in town is great. You wanna do something the two days before? That's cool, I'm already home. Um, you know, I, I, can, I can get out there. You wanna do it the week before? It doesn't matter when it is. I, I can just calendar me in. Um, so definitely want to get those uh, wedding events lined up and, and make sure you budget for those as well. And then you want to know the code, the dress code that is. <laughs> um, you know, what are you going to wear to the wedding? Uh, are, do you have a suit you can already wear? If you're not part of the wedding, you probably, and this is where there's a big difference, guys and girls. I got suits, I could just put one on um, and show up to a wedding, done. I have shirts, is it the same one I wore to the last wedding I went to? Maybe, probably, who cares? Um, you know, no one, no one knows, it's, it's a plain suit. Um, it's not this color or otherwise people would know. Um, but, you know, it, do you have something you can already wear? Can you combine things other pieces of clothing that you have that you've worn to give it a different look, but it's the same thing. Um, you know, go look at off-brand stuff or off-price retailers for a new dress or a new top thing that you could put on top of the dress, a new scarf that you can maybe, you know, accessorize it differently and give it a whole new look. Um, or there's even rent outfit uh, websites, which- I Yeah, mean, Rent the Runway. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Rent the Runway. There you go. Wear it, ship it back. It's no different than renting a suit to be part of the wedding. Um, yeah. So, you know, a whole new look. You don't have to worry about wearing it at the next wedding. And ladies too, you can always swap with your friends or family if they are a similar size or there's um, Facebook free communities where you just exchange free items. Yeah, that's, that's good because you wore that wedding to your college roommates. Um, wedding but your cousin no one saw your cousin in it she can go wear it to another wedding and if your cousin wore that dress to you know her roommate's party you can wear it now and there you go no one's seen you in it it's brand new no one you know you don't come out in the pictures no one's going to compare your college roommate's wedding to your cousin's college roommate <laughs> wedding and say that's the same dress uh, there is nothing wrong with wearing the same dress to multiple weddings. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'd be all for it. But I do know that sometimes it's, you try and avoid it is what I Yes, yes, um, it's hard. I, I always say, well, it still matches my suit. Um, I wore it the same time, uh, but apparently that doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, so know the code. 
sometimes it's more relaxed. I mean, there, I've been to weddings where it's like, this is casual. Then you buy a new pair of jeans and a button up. Um, that's sweet. That's easy. That you already are, you already have that sitting in your closet. So, um, you know, maybe that's really casual, but if you do it at a beach, I've seen shorts like khaki shorts and the polo, um, or Hawaiian shirts, mm -hmm. know what the dress code is ahead of time. Um, just don't show up like in a white dress, uh, and, 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 and <laughs> no, look up some wedding attire, uh, guidelines and, and, and follow those, but don't break your budget on it. Well, you said know the code. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's uh, daughter got married this last weekend, and they had a uh, like cosplay themed wedding. Oh. So there was like a, a Woody from what was it Toy Story? Toy Story. Yeah. So I mean, that wouldn't necessarily be an outfit that you wear at every wedding, but it was but welcome to that dumb. one. Yeah. And you could wear the Dumb and Dumber suit, I think. <laughs> yeah. And and get away with it. <laughs> um. yeah, it could be a couple's outfit. Exactly. Um, you know, or or you do the you know what was it britney spears denim outfit uh, yeah. and, and and then everyone will know what it is um you know so know the code uh for the dress code and then communicate things change budget busters happen if something happens and you just it came up you don't know you know you don't you can't make it anymore communicate it with the couple and you know and, and let them know like hey i'm sorry to do this cancel on you last minute but xyz happened i can't go um and, and just communicate with the couple like, hey, you know, just circling up, you know, how's the wedding going? What are we going to do? Or, or with other people who are going, um, you know, don't be afraid to communicate with everyone involved as much as possible. And you hope that the couple's communicating back. Um, if they're not, have them watch Last Swim Live, um, <laughs> and then we'll, we'll suggest to them that they communicate. Next, some gift-saving tips. Um, if they have a gift registry, find it, um, ideally stick to it, but, you know, find it early. There's usually expensive things and then inexpensive things. And if you wait too long, the inexpensive things might be gone. Uh, so find that thing early, get in there early, and then you have more options on different price points that you could, you know, take advantage of. Uh, maybe even you find one that's on sale um like oh they wanted that and it's 30 percent off look at that now it's in my budget there you go um so you could, those less expensive options could disappear um also usually with gift registries there's a gift card option so if their gift if their gift registry is on amazon on target or whatever there's usually the option to add a gift card at any price point and then you could still they can get whatever they want um after the event they even get a sale on it I, I, you know you get a percentage off whatever not is not purchased off your gift registry so um there's that option or gather up a bunch of your friends who are also going to the wed wedding or one or two or whatever and split a larger ticket item uh, maybe they have a set of pots and pans and you split it two or three ways so that all of a sudden it's within everyone's price point and the couple gets this giant gift like oh i didn't think anyone would buy this um, and, and, you know, they get an exciting gift and then you stay within your budget and everyone stays in their budget and everyone can be happy. Gift registries are, are, are always interesting. Um, did you do a gift registry, Katie? We did. And we actually did it because of that discount that you get at the end. Mm -hmm. So Honestly. that's actually something to note that sometimes people are putting things on a registry just so that they could get a discount at yeah. the end. Like, I don't expect anyone to buy me the vacuum, but if I'm getting yeah. a 20% off the vacuum afterwards, scan yeah. that. It's uh, going on now. Exactly. <laughs> That's what they tell you when you sign up. And you're like, for reals? I'm scanning everything. Uh, you know, that discount is nice. Um, so, you know, look for those. Um, maybe you vacation after your wedding. If you're going to a destination, maybe you're going back to college town, back home. Uh, or just somewhere you've never been or somewhere you like to vacation, link up a few days after the event and save those for your vacation time to go do whatever it is you like to do. Go visit a national park, go visit a theme park, um, do whatever it is you know you like. So if you can, if you get the time off, you've already traveled there, you're already there, it can make at least that part of the vacation um, a little less expensive. 
yeah, at least a little long weekend. Yeah, even if it's just a day or two that you add to it for yourself afterwards to explore whatever is in the area, um, you know, that could that could be a, a lot of fun. Plus, if the wedding is on a weekend, you add that Monday, Tuesday afterwards, usually cheaper to fly out middle of the week. Usually those hotel nights are going to be cheaper anyways. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to you're already out there. Take advantage of it. Yeah. And well, especially if you've been in the bridal party, you might be exhausted. <laughs> right. You might need that just to recover. And then at the end, have some fun. Weddings are fun. Uh, once you're there, enjoy your time at the wedding. Um, if you drink, don't drive yourself home or to the hotel. Um, other than that, have fun. It's, you know, have the, the happy couple's big day, but you're already there. You might as well have some fun while you're, with, while you're hanging out with them. Um, and that is it. Any questions? I don't know if we have any questions from the Facebook side of things. Can you talk a little bit about like the groomsmen side and the cost of renting? Is there any way that you can finance that, split that payment? They, they, you know, I didn't look into that. I'm guessing yes, because they've done so many things with um, like after pay and, and things like that. Um, you just should be able to, um, or actually from when we did it, you can put, you have to put a deposit down when you get measured, but then you can pay leading up to it. Um, so you can kind of turn it into your own little financing thing and call in a payment ahead of time um, and, and do it that way. Um, plus, um, if you're going to rent from the groomsmen side of things, the cool thing is if they go to a big national chain, you can get fitted at home, wherever home is, and, and if you're traveling, and get it shipped for free or pick it up for free at the location, at the town. Um, so like, for example, so you don't have to worry about trying to put it in a special container or a special travel case and then putting it on the airplane or checking an extra bag or whatever it is, you know, you can get measured in your area and then have it picked up or pick it up and return it at the location, wherever it happens to be. Like one of my, uh, uh, groomsmen, uh, he, he was in, he was in college at the time. He was in Louisiana. Got measured there, picked it up here, dropped it off here, and then went back home. You didn't have to travel with it. Um, you know, and that was something we did. Like, make sure Zach can find a place to get fitted somewhere he could pick it up here. So Little Town, Louisiana, what do you have available? Um, I made him drive like 30 minutes to a bigger little <laughs> town. Uh, but other than that, it was, it was pretty easy. <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. I was always curious because guys have to rent and you have mm -hmm. to give that back. But, you know, you're still paying close to what we're paying for a bridesmaid's dress that we, you know, don't necessarily wear again. But right. it's just interesting to know that you guys have to actually give it back, whereas we get to keep it. Exactly. <laughs> or you could, you know, there's, I've seen it where couples say, you know what, everyone go get a black suit. Um, everyone go get, um, you know, and, and that's something they could reuse again. Go get a navy blue suit um and and you know that that would be cool i told my wife like look this is the one time you're gonna be able to tell me and my friends and my brother what to wear uh so take advantage of it uh, <laughs> it's not gonna happen again um so you know that was uh that was, that was the rental part the shoes i was like look, you do your own shoes um uh, but <laughs> other than that and then i've seen people get do fun things with them like wear a pair of Converse, wear, you know, a pair of tenant and Jordans or something um, for the guys, um, you know, or, or something like that. Um, you, know, you can get creative, but that's on the couple. That's not, you don't get to do that as your own decision as a wedding guest. Um, like, oh, I'm just going to wear my, uh, you know, my PF flyers or my Converse to the wedding and that'll be cool, right? And you get, that's where you have to know the dress code. Gotcha. So you Do can... Oh, go ahead. You have we just question? have one clarification. Yeah. When you were saying, um, as soon as you find out that somebody's getting married and you learn what that date is, that's when you should start saving. Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, you get that, save the date. That's your starting point. Uh, if you've already determined, yes, I'm going to go. Uh, you know, if you get a wedding invite and you're like, oh, this is my cousin's, I'm definitely going to this starting point. 
and the earlier you start, the easier it makes it to budget because you give yourself the more time to save. Um, and, and that just makes it a lot easier for all of it. Uh, and if it's in town, maybe you're done saving in a month or two. And then you don't have to worry about it. You just set that aside. If it's out of town, you're going to have the more expenses. You're going to need that time to save up your, your reserved uh, cash flow. Sometimes, though, when you are in town, you may end up with more extra responsibilities. Um, the, or you may not be part of the bridal party. Uh, but because you're in town, you still might get to go to the events, which is something we did, where it's like, you're not a groomsman or a bridesmaid, but you're totally coming to this thing. Um, so that you're no longer just a guest, you're in town, let's go do this thing, let's go to this thing. So that's where that communicating really comes into play also. So you can continue listening to, to us talk. Um, and we have a podcast called Talk Wealth to Me. Last week, Chase and I discussed cell phones and how they've changed communications, just telephones in general. Did we go a little off uh, on the history of telephones? <laughs> yeah, and I didn't even know we were both so into telephones. Uh, but it was fun to record, so hopefully it's fun to listen to. This week, we talked to a coffee roaster um, and how they, coffee co-op, changing personal finances around the world uh, in coffee countries. So a little bit of everything. Some of them will apply to you. Some of them won't. Um, and then join us in two weeks for some lifestyle creep um, and, uh, and, and your money. What is lifestyle creep? It can happen to all of us. Um, it's not that creepy. It'll be fun. Um, but you can register Eventbrite, same place you register for this, and same place you can register for all our upcoming uh, presentations. Well, thank you, Katie, for joining me. Um, I had fun. I hope thanks you did as well. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. And uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, stopping by. <laughs>